when the Wapo Indians, a tribe of Native Americans, lived here, they called this lush green valley land of plenty. And they called it so because of the abundance of wildlife that inhabited the land. Amongst that abundance, wild grapes also grew, but it took early settlers like George Calvert Yont and Charles Crook to recognize its wine growing potential. Nowadays, the valley is one of the premier wine growing regions in the world, and one word alone is enough to describe it Napa. Its 38 mile long valley stretches from Calistoga at the northern end down to Napa itself, encompassing the towns of Yontville, Oakville, Rutherford, and St Helena, a vibrant and stylish place right in the middle of the valley. wineries, many of which are architectural masterpieces, while others are small and quaint, are dotted over the entire length of the valley, like this one. When Jean Laurent, a 15-year-old immigrant from Bordeaux in France, came to California in the middle of the 19th century to make his fortune in gold, he failed miserably. But when he turned his hand to winemaking, he succeeded outstandingly and founded Laurent Vineyards in 1874. Bruce Markham, the outdoor advertising magnet, came along in 1978 founding Markham Vineyards to become known as one of the great Merlot wineries in the valley. The historic stone cellar built in 1879 has housed wine since the day it was built and is understandably one of winemaker Chris Nichols' favourite places. We're standing inside our stone cellar where we house 1,600 to 2,000 barrels, any given vintage. And here I have a barrel of our Merlot, our flagship wine. But that's not all that goes on in this incredible cellar. It's also a venue for corporate events and wine dinners. You know, since the very, very beginning, this facility has never stopped operating, making Markham Vineyards the fourth oldest continuously operating winery in Napa County. Somewhere, Jean Laurent is smiling. As magnificent as the glorious Napa wine country scenery is, it really would be a serious oversight not to include a tour of the city. Now you can trace the city's history through its architectural heritage and the very best place to start is up here at the top end of Main Street in historic downtown. And there are two reasons why this is a good place. Firstly, because Main Street has a profusion of notable buildings. And secondly, if you start up here on the banks of the Napa River and head northwest down Main Street, you won't miss a thing. Pretty much the first building you'll see is the Hat Building, dating back to 1884, and now a hotel, market and retail complex full of colour and atmosphere. Oh, now, that's the Opera House, 1879, beautifully restored by local preservationists. Now this symmetrical facade, tall, rectangular, pedimented windows, and brackets under the eaves. That's indicative of the Italianate style. Nice. Down here on the corner of Main and First Street are two great buildings, both designed in 1888 by Napa's foremost architect, Luther Turton. The first one's the Winship Building. It was known as the tallest building on Main Street. Frankly, I'd say it still is. Now, next door, the Semeral building was commissioned by Italian grocer Bartolomeo Semeral. It's uh, the finest brick structure in Napa. On the ground floor of the Semeral building, the bounty hunter has 400 wines by the bottle and 40 by the glass, whilst Downtown Joe's is another really popular venue and brews 210 gallons of beer several times a week. Right down at the far end is the Vintners Collective in the Pfeiffer Building, the oldest stone building in Napa, where wine lovers can taste the wines of 18 of the best winemakers in the valley. And there's so much more, you better come and see it for yourself.
For those of you too young to know about the Belle Epoque period, here's a little history lesson. The years between 1890 and 1914, which preceded the First World War, are today known as the Belle Epoque period. This was a period where pleasure reigned and joie de vivre, the joy of life, characterised daily life. And why am I telling you this? Because this is the Belle Epoque B&B and Buckley House Suites, a luxury B&B in a fab location near everything you've come to see. This pair of stunning Victorian Queen Anne properties built in 1893 are fairly brimming with Belle Epoque joie de vivre, exquisite in every way. Breakfast is a lavish, award-winning affair, served in the formal dining room under soft, warm light reflected in a sea of crystal-cut glass and featuring the odd homemade speciality. Or you may just want to relax in the fresh valley air. Here's a perfect spot. But whatever your day comprises of, you won't want to miss the complimentary wine reception held between 6 and 7 every evening. All guests are invited to taste the host's personal vintage wines, served with hors d'oeuvres in the inn's intimate wine cellar. La Belle Epoque is the only B&B in the Napa Valley with its very own wine tasting room, and it's rated the number one in the nation for B&B wine tasting. And finally, a place to retire to. Six incredible guest rooms and three magnificent suites, all with beautiful antique and Victorian touches from a beautiful era. Epoch, the beautiful era. Do you see the connection now? On the Silverado Trail between Napa and Yontville is Signorello, another one of those small by appointment only wineries that bypasses the tourism trappings so more attention can be paid to the wines. Well, Mary Parker is Director of Marketing here at Signorello Vineyards. Pierre is the winemaker. Signorello is a boutique winery in the lower Napa Valley, just a few miles from downtown Napa. Mary, this has got a, an amazing feeling to it. What, what really sets this place apart from others? Well, we are a family-owned, owner-occupied uh, winery that specializes in small quantity uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. We have just a couple of barrels of Pinot Noir, Zinfandel, and as well Syrah. Our smallest production is a commemorative bottling of Chardonnay called Hope's Cuvée, uh, which is produced in honor of our owner, Ray Signorello's mother. So Padrone is our flagship bottling of Cabernet. Uh, the fruit comes from a corner of a very rocky vineyard on our back block, and it's made in honor of our owner's father, uh, the founder of the winery. Uh, Raymond Signorello Sr. Well, Signorello Vineyards has always been a family passion starting with he and his father in the early 80s. Uh, he has every intention of keeping it small and, and handcrafted. Pierre, yeah, you're the winemaker. Now you've been here since what sometime in 1998. My dad was a winemaker and a wine grower in Corsica, France and my grandfather before him was in Algeria and North Africa. The other thing that's obviously of great appeal is the area, the scenery, the building is magnificent. You've got this incredible swimming pool. It is an infinity pool that is used for parties, for release parties, for our padrone and for wine club memberships. What I would love to do is uh, take a little glass of wine, go and stand outside over the pool, look over the vineyards and say thanks very much. It's been a real pleasure to meet you. Thank you it's very much pleasure. indeed. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Want some peaceful elegance in the Napa Valley? Good, then it would appear that you've come to the right place because that just happens to be the slogan of the Candlelight Inn B&B. This place is so convenient to the extent that it's right in the heart of Napa town, yet it's still so secluded on an acre of grounds and sheltered beneath towering redwoods and cedars. And it's really quaint too, just like an English Tudor Inn. 
Built in 1929 by the local postmaster, it's full of typical Tudor features like these exposed blackened oak beams and inside the whitewashed plaster finish. The rooms are designed with all comforts considered. Decks or balconies in most, jacuzzi tubs for two, fireplaces and some lovely special touches. Out the back are the most perfect of gardens, a sun seeker's paradise you might call it. Beautiful manicured lawns, a huge sparkling swimming pool, a peaceful shaded arbour with the Napa Creek running quietly behind, and all of this enclosed on one side by majestic ponderosa pines, and on the other by redwood trees. Would you credit it? Redwood trees in the garden. OK, now you've seen the beds, now here's the breakfast. A decadent three-course gourmet affair served in a sunny breakfast room looking out over the garden. This should set you up nicely for a day of wine tasting or exploring in the Napa Valley. That's if you can manage to get off your chair after all that food. And the gastronomic delights don't stop there. There's even complimentary wine and hors d'oeuvres for all, just in case you need a filler between breakfast and dinner. Well, the Candlelight Inn's been described as an oasis in the Napa Valley and one of the best inns in town. And it's certainly clear from reading the reviews about this place and talking to some of the people visiting it that Wendy and Mark's promise that your every need will be considered is well and truly fulfilled. Highway 29 may well be the significant north-south artery in the Napa Valley, but Turn off it and head just a short distance west up into the hills of Oakville and you might as well be a hundred million miles away. And Dinesh Manya, founder of Diamond Oaks Winery, knew that only too well when in 1977 he started acquiring his 550 acres of the finest vineyard land in four premier appellations in the Sonoma and Napa Valley. Up here at Diamond Oaks, he has a little piece of paradise, a beautiful winery amongst 360 degrees of views. Oak-clad hills behind and vineyards sprawling into the distance across Oakville, Yontville and Calistoga. And there are no shortages of places to take in these views, the picnic gardens, the grove and the waterfalls. And then there's the matter of the wines. Enter Ron Brown, winemaker. Our whole philosophy here is to take what's in the field and what dictates what we do is what the field does. We try and let Mother Nature tell us what we want to do. We kind of look at it as being stewards of the grapes. Well, I spend most of my time in the field. Um, I am there the entire time the grapes are maturing. Uh, our reserves are basically based on my taste. Uh, certain rows, certain aspects of the vineyard I happen to like, and that goes into our reserve program. We produce about 15 to 20,000 cases a year. And we have uh, three different kinds of Chardonnays. Uh, two of them come from the Carneros region. Uh, we have about 330 acres in Carneros. About 150 of that is Chardonnay. So I, I had um, this visitor up in my tasting lab, and he's looking out the window, and all of a sudden he's, you know, he's swirling his wine glass and he's tasting, and he gets this blank look on his face. And I'm going, hello, John. He goes, oh. He said, um, what a wonderful view. And I said, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard life, but somebody has to do this. And I mean, everywhere you look around this winery, there's um, these marvelous views, either the northern part of Napa Valley or out, you know, out this window, the southern part of Napa Valley. And that's not to mention, you know, the fact that we have great wines, which we do.
there's a new and refreshingly different attraction in the Californian wine country that takes the definition of cultural centre to new dimensions. It's the American centre for wine, food and the arts and I promise you whatever your level of expertise or interest, Copia as it's called, will have something for you. Now Jeff Dawson is curator of gardens and not only has he been here since the opening but he watched this idea get off the ground. Jeff, what's it all about? Well it's all about bringing food, wine and art together as a cultural lifestyle. And Robert Mondavi, the father of Napa Valley wine, had this vision of bringing what he considered to be a California lifestyle and all the parts that, that, that make it up together into one place where he could share it with the public and that's what Copia started out as. Well, basically we have three and a half acres of garden that are all edible that I'm responsible for. That garden produces produce that is brought into um, three different uh, locations in the facility. Julia's Kitchen, a white tablecloth restaurant, the American Market Cafe, a casual cafe, and we do cooking classes and culinary pre presentations and the produce is used, used there also. We have wine classes, so you can do wine tasting, you can learn about uh, wine bottles, wine closures, uh, different regions of the world and their wines. Uh, we have performances, so we have a theater where there are movies and, and concerts. Copia is really one of the first stops for visitors in the Napa Valley. They can learn wine basics, they can orientate themselves to the valley, they can get some ideas to where to eat and where to go, and, and they can learn something in the process. So it really is it's kind of a starting place for tourists who come to visit Napa Valley. Remember when winery tasting rooms were intimate, friendly and small enough to enjoy a glass of wine in a pleasant, unharried atmosphere? A place just like this, run by people like this. We're having a barrel sample of one of our newest baby wines. This is a 2004 Mount Vitor Cabernet Sauvignon. And as you know, Robert Craig is known for really outstanding Cabernet Sauvignons from the Napa Valley. And we're especially known for Hillside Cabernet Sauvignon. Here at Robert Craig, we produce two mountain wines. One is Mount Beater, which is on the western side of the valley. Very fruit-driven wine of black cherry, uh, cedar, and cocoa. The other one is Howe Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon, which delivers really dense blackberry, spice, and mountain herbs. Well, welcome to our downtown Napa tasting room. It's the only one quite like this here, but I'm happy to have a chance to introduce you to Robert Craig Wines and give you a taste in our informal setting here. Enjoy. trains and there are trains. There are trains that you get on every day and trains that will take you on rare and special journeys like this one, the Napa Valley Wine Train, a train that will remind you of those bygone days when luxury meant luxury and service wasn't just something that happened during a game of tennis. Hello. Typical journey is a three hour, 36 mile round trip excursion leaving from historic Napa and travelling to St Helena and back. There are eight lavishly restored vintage Pullman rail cars dating between 1915 and 1947 and representing three different styles of restaurant for brunch, lunch or dinner. In the midst of all this splendour is the wine tasting car where you can sample over 30 different varietals of Napa Valley wine and, thanks very much indeed if you're on the late dinner seating, you get appetisers to go with it. This is the newest addition to the wine train, the Silverado grill car. Great casual dining, perfect for families with kids, decorated in an American frontier theme. And look at these photos donated to the wine train owner by Robert Redford. Yeah, how are you doing? We're having one heck of a time. How are you doing? Good. Do your health. 
<laughs> and what about this one, the Champagne Vista Dome Car, circa 1950s. Velveteen high back chairs for maximum comfort and minimum effort. A glass top with elevated seating to capitalise on that incredible scenery and a welcome glass of champagne on arrival. That's the chef is Kelly McDonald. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. What Welcome. are you going to prepare for us? We're going to do a nice little pork dish with some seared foie gras, some nice California fresh vegetables. That's fantastic. I'm going right. to get out of your way, let you get on with it. You're not going to help me? I might do. I'll be here if you need me. All right, thank okay. you. Okay. Hi, folks. We're going to do a little uh, dish today uh, of some nice grilled pork. Okay, a little grilled pork tenderloin. We're going to do a little seared foie gras. Our vegetables are just about done. We're going to hit it again with a little bit of white wine. Sorry you can't smell this, but it does smell pretty good if I can say so myself. We're going to hit it with a little gloss of Vion, which is a veal demi reduction. A nice little uh, butternut squash. Piece of pork. Let's not forget our beautiful foie gras on top. Finish it with sauce. Okay, let's eat. How do you decide which wines to pair with which foods? Based on tannins, the varietal, of the year of the wine, and we call it bridging here on, the, on that Valley Wine Train, a bite and a sip. Um, basically, we want to be able to bring out the tannins and bring out those jammy flavors in red wine by bridging some, some of the same flavors in the food. So that's how we do it here. But are you enhancing the food by choosing the right wine or vice versa? Both. Both. It's a bite and a sip. So we're enhancing the food and we're enhancing the wine. So once you take a sip of wine, you can't wait to get your fork and uh, try, try, try the food again. When the Wapo Indians are small and quaint, are dotted over the entire length of the valley, like this one. When Jean Laurent, a 15-year-old immigrant from Bordeaux in France, came to California in the middle of the 19th century to make his fortune in gold, he failed miserably. But when he turned his hand to winemaking, he succeeded outstandingly and founded Laurent Vineyards in 1874. Bruce Markham, the outdoor advertising magnet, came along in 1978, founding Markham Vineyards to become known as one of the... at the northern end, down to Napa itself, encompassing the towns of Yontville, Oakville, Rutherford and St Helena, a vibrant and stylish place right in the middle of the valley. wineries, many of which are architectural masterpieces, while others the tribe of Native Americans lived here, they called this lush green valley land of plenty, and they called it so because of the abundance of wildlife that inhabited the land. Amongst that abundance, wild grapes also grew, but it took early settlers like George Calvert Yont and Charles Crook to recognise its wine growing potential. 
Nowadays, the valley is one of the premier wine growing regions in the world, and one word alone is enough to describe it Napa. Its 38 mile long valley stretches from Calisto to the great Merlot wineries in the valley. The historic stone cellar built in 1879 has housed wine since the day it was built and is understandably one of winemaker Chris Nichols' favourite places. We're standing inside our stone cellar where we house 1,600 to 2,000 barrels, any given vintage. And here I have a barrel of our Merlot, our flagship wine. 